At any rate, um, today is a sad day in American history because our president was assassinated. So today is about violence, but also commemorating a victim. So I thought it was, it was a very fitting occasion to discuss violence uh, and uh, victims and victimhood. We, I teach a seminar on uh, mass murder in failed states. It's called, at least for now, Genocide and Genocide Prevention. It's not a warm, fuzzy class. And because of my work for a long time in Africa, I thought about uh, our guest, about inviting some childers, which actually has happened. He keeps his word, compliments of the Yatseviches, especially uh, Monica Moral Yatsevich, who's hiding somewhere. Oh, there she is. I need my glasses, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, please let me give you very broad background to Sam's story. When the Cold War ended, America essentially withdrew from the world. Our <coughs> political class enjoyed uh, the end of history and uh, the peace dividend. That is, our military dwindled, we were incapable of projecting our force as well as we had during the Cold War, we also had no idea what was going on because we dropped the ball. There's been much talk in this town about us screwing up in Afghanistan simply because we had no idea what was going on. We were not interested anymore. The same and even more so applies to Africa. As far as Africa, we were fixated on ending apartheid and we thought, well, Great, it worked out, the communists didn't take over, Nelson Mandela changed completely and he brought peace. So that was a success. I have news, South Africa is just one country in Af Africa and it's also in the South. <laughs> Africa is a continent. We're not paying attention and the rest of Africa went to hell in a handbasket. Why? A new generation arose a, gen a generation of warlords. They no longer promised a socialist paradise on earth. They promised that once they had power, they would keep it without any pretenses of justice or democracy. Of course, they sloganeered, but they marched around in every, almost every African country like zombies. The leaders less and less educated, some of them not at all, and all they knew was how to kill efficiently their own people. It's often said that we are, when we are met with violence, it behooves us to turn the other cheek. Yeah, if it's about me, sure, I can turn the other cheek, should that be my choice but not when it's about my five-year-old. I have a daughter, I would never turn the other cheek if somebody attempted to violate her in any shape and manner. In fact, I wouldn't turn the other cheek if someone went after a boy and girl scout troop I help out with. I would be merciless. Turning the other cheek is okay for an indiv individual, but as far as other lives are concerned, one must stand up. And in one case, somebody who was helping orphans, by the way, we have a long tradition here at the Institute of World Politics, one of our professor's wife uh, runs a clinic in northern Uganda, a free clinic. So somebody decided to help the victims and by not turning the other cheek, but by picking up a machine gun. With all that, I will give you Monica, who will tell you more about the extraordinary fellow, but I would like to encourage you, this is for the highbrows, that means all our <coughs> guests, you can have it outside, and this is for me. 
because I'm primitive and I like that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you very much. When we're done, by the way, and Sam is done, and Monica, we'd like you to grab a piece of pizza and then we'll put the movie on. Low brow. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd also like to mention, just to, to follow up on Marek's um, comments, this is also a week to celebrate victory, even though lives were lost. And uh, this past Tuesday was the 150th anniversary of the dedication day to honoring the fallen uh, soldiers and even civilians during the Battle of Gettysburg when Abraham Lincoln gave his Gettysburg Address. So this is also a week to celebrate victory in many respects of uh, the history of our country. Um, Sam Childers personally knows and understands a world that is completely foreign to us in every sense of the word. As a geographer, and in my opinion, the time and space dimension Sam has harnessed is irrefutable. And without getting into a, th a theory course on geography and uh, Immanuel Kant and time and space, uh, I will tell you that Sam is a witness to the genocide in Sudan. And that is the, the, the closest summary I can give you. For 17 years, he has devoted his life to protecting children in Africa. Sam is a defender of innocent people who find themselves in the crossfire of mad men. My husband and I were having lunch with Sam and his wife yesterday, and um, I didn't even know this about my husband, but my husband confessed uh, to, to the wife, to Sam's wife, that when he was a schoolboy, one of his heroes was David Livingston. I can tell you today that Sam is David Livingston's American counterpart in the 21st century. That's the closest you'll ever get to a man with that kind of bravery and that kind of faith in God. So Sam is pushing frontiers in Africa. And tonight, I'm pleased to tell you that you will hear his side of the story personally. I encourage you, even if you need to write it down, to ask questions afterwards um, about his experience in Sudan and other African countries. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Sam Childers. I won't talk very long. I think everybody wants some pizza. But anyways, hey, uh, I've been in South Sudan going on 18 years now. I went there with a full head of hair and it was black and now I'm getting old. But anyways, uh, I'll probably die in South Sudan. I love it there. I love it in Uganda. I love Ethiopia. I love Africa altogether. But I'm going to let you just ask me, let's say, two or three questions. Then we'll do the pizza, watch the movie, and I'll let you ask me all the questions you want to. How does that sound... Uh, I mean, because I can get up here and talk for hours. I am a preacher, so I can preach for <laughs> hours and hours, and I'm not going to do that to you. So who got a question? Just lift your hand. Go ahead, right there. Were you brought up in the Christian faith? Yeah, I was brought up inside of a Christian home. Uh, I tell you real quickly, at 11 years old, I was brought up in the perfect home. When I give my testimony, a lot of people say, what kind of parents did you have? I had the best parents, middle-class parents. They, they, they uh, always treated me good, gave me everything I needed, and even more than I even needed. But at 11 years old, I started doing drugs. Uh, thought I looked cool, thought all the women was going to be watching me because I was smoking cigarettes and smoking pot and drinking booze, you know, at 13 years old. I thought I looked 16 years old. All of a sudden, I'm 15 years old. I didn't care if anybody looked at me cool anymore because I had a serious addiction. I'm putting a needle in my arm, shooting up heroin, shooting up cocaine. I went as far off as you could ever go in the drug world, selling drugs. I was a hired gun for drug deals. So I went as far off as you could go. 
And then one day, Orlando, Florida, I got into a bad bar fight and almost got killed. That night on the way home, I said, I'm done living this life. Somebody's going to kill me. See, I don't have a problem with dying, but I have a problem with what I'm going to die for. And it was actually two years later that I walked into a church and I said, God, I need some help. Here I am. And I gave him everything, you know. So somebody else, another question. Don't be shy. I'll start calling on you. Go ahead. You know, God is a very clever God. I believe when I walked into that church and I said, God, here I am, I believe he scratched his head a little bit and said, what in the world am I going to do with this guy? <laughs> and I believe he put me in a war. But see, I remember when I first heard I was going to Africa, I said, I'm not going to Africa. Why would I go to Africa? I'm white. Why would I go to Africa? Those people got themselves in a problem over there. They can get themselves out. I'm not going to Africa. And the man that told me I was going six years later, I'm there in Africa. But I remember telling him that that night, and all he said to me was, we'll see. Six years later, I find myself in Africa. I thought I was going there to put some roofs, steel roofing, on a college. Okay, because that's what I'd done, a contractor. But I came across a small body of a child that stepped on a landmine. And from the waist down was gone. And see, I'm a hillbilly from Pennsylvania, okay? I'm not smart. I've never, I don't have a diploma in, even in high school, okay? But there's a few things I can do. You know, I'm good with a gun. Uh, if I see somebody pull a landmine out, I can pull a landmine out. So I went back and started pulling landmines out. I pulled them out for about a year or so after I stood over that body of that child and said, God, I'll do whatever it takes to help these people. I didn't realize that I was going to be there a lifetime, you know, but it's been now going on 18 years. One more question. Go ahead. You mentioned that you were being prophesied over. Yeah. I don't want to scare people here tonight, so I didn't say that. <laughs> you know, I knew, I knew when I was five years old, I knew I was going to be a preacher. You know, it was prophesied over my mom. Okay, my mom lost uh, a child, and she had a nervous breakdown. A pastor prophesied over her that she was going to have a son, and he was going to be a preacher. And he was going to preach around the world. And then again, if, uh, somebody, another preacher prophesied over when she was carrying me in the womb and said that he was going to preach around the world. And then again, another preacher, when I was like two years old, standing beside her at an altar, prophesied and said, this young man is going to speak to kings and presidents and went on and on, you know. And then when I was 18 years old, she thought they all were liars. No, she didn't. <laughs> But she never stopped praying. But, uh, you know, those prophecies came true. You know, and I'm not here to preach, okay? I'm not a Bible thumper. But I don't know what you believe in, but I support what you believe in. But I believe in Jesus Christ. You know, He's the one that changed my life. And, uh, you know, prophecy's real, whether you like it or not. I didn't like it. I didn't want to go to Africa. Now I live there, you know. So listen, let's have pizza. And I'm going to let you ask all the questions you want when we're done. All right.